Good morning. You know, you guys don't get to see yourselves from up here, but you're quite an attractive bunch, I have to say. All dressed up and pretty, have your all combed and pretty up this morning. Would you like to stand and sing a few more uh, some hymns to the Lord Jesus? Be the glory, great things he hath done. So loved he the world that he gave us his son, who yielded his life and atonement for sin, and opened the life gate that all may go in. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord, let the earth hear his voice. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord.
did this song last week, and I want to do it again this week because it was new to us last week. And quite honestly, I want to do it because we have drums today, and that makes it a lot more fun to do. <laughs> and welcome, Rob. Rob's back today. Rob Whitaker, you guys all know Robbie. I call him Robbie. I've known him since he was like a teenager, and so I still call him his kid name, Robbie. pray for our country. We know what's going on with this assassination attempt last night, and, and there's a lot of turmoil and division and so forth, and we know the answer is not a political candidate, is it? It's Jesus. The answer is Jesus, and so we need to pray for our country. Let's pray together. Father, we thank you that you love us, that you allow us to come to your house and together worship you. Father, we have so many concerns on our heart. Father, I pray that we could just give those to you. And, Father, that we could just give you the praise and honor that you are so richly due, that we could walk in your ways. And, Father, that today we could just worship you. Thank you so much for the love that you give us. Father, we pray for our country, for the concerns that we have uh, of life. But, Father, again, we pray we could give them to you. In Jesus' name, and amen. You guys can be seated. We're going to teach you a new song today. And uh, it's actually an old song. This song was written in 1719 by Isaac Watts. And so you may not recognize his name, but you will recognize a lot of the hymns he's written. He's written, I think he's attributed to like 750 hymns that he wrote. The ones that we sing, uh, When I Survey the Wondrous Cross, he wrote that song. He wrote Joy to the World. He wrote Alas and Did My Savior Bleed. And there's, a, there's others that you recognize also. 
But this one he wrote as well. It's Oh God, Our Help in Ages Past. And you guys probably remember this hymn. It was written in 1719. So this, this is 225 years old, this song is. 225 years old. Isn't that something? And the truth is the same today as it was then, right? And so, um, but it's, we've, we've changed it just a bit, um, as we do a lot of our songs, I suppose. Now, I didn't do this arrangement. This is an arrangement that I've, actually, we did this at a, at a church I used to go to. And so, it's added a course to it. But I want to read the passage of Scripture. So, this, this guy, um, Isaac Watts, was a theologian. He was a minister. He was a, a writer. And he was also a logician, L-O-G-I-C-I-N, a person who, um, works with logic. In other words, he would uh, put logical reasoning together. And uh, I, something, I'm, this is way more I want to say about this, but I was reading yesterday about him as I was preparing this. And um, one of the things that he, uh, he also dabbled a little bit in science, and he was a, a affiliated with Oxford and Harvard University, Oxford University, excuse me, Oxford. And he wrote a paper, and he included in that some information about the five uh, chemical elements that were known at that time. So think about that. 250 years ago, we have the periodical table of the elements, and you guys have all seen that with all the elements. I think we've got 90, I forget how many there are, um, well over 90. There's 98? I'm trying to think. But anyway, there, there, were not, there were five then, and he also introduced the idea of compounds versus elements, which is interesting. But that was 250 years ago. And so we've learned so much about science in 250 years, um, but the truth of God has not changed at all, right? So anyway, he, um, as I read about this, he had meditated on the book, on the Psalms 90, this passage, trying to understand the meaning of that book. And that's where this song came from. And I want to read just the first two verses of that. It says, Psalms 90, verses 1 and 2, says, Lord... Through all the generations, you have been our home, our refuge. Before the mountains were born, before you gave birth to the earth and the, and the world, from the beginning to, uh, from the, excuse me, from the beginning to until now, you are God. That just says it all, doesn't it? From the beginning to now, God is God. So anyway... You can set through part of this. We'll probably make you stand up there in the second half of it. But since you're kind of listening to it, look, Josh is laughing at me. So let's, uh, we'll try this out and see how you like it.
this a few weeks ago. It's also a new song. God of the Ages, straight out of the book of Colossians. You know, we talked about God being no different from 250 years ago to today, right? Christ Jesus is the same way. I think about this sometimes when I'm reading the scriptures, and I think about, I read about the Lord healing people, and I read about Him going to the cross and dying on the cross and all the things that he did and, and then it just occurs to me sometimes <clears throat> that the same Lord Jesus that I'm praying to is the same person who did that let's sing this about the Lord Jesus he is the image of the invisible God the firstborn of creation. He is the first, the last, the one who matters most. He is creator, ruling sustainer of all. He holds it all together. He is the word of God, the hope His name is lifted higher, Jesus, your name is lifted higher, we bless you, Lord, God of the ages, highest of all, we magnify you. sustainer of all he holds it all together he is the word of God the hope for all the world his name is lifted higher Jesus your name is lifted higher we bless Oh, we magnify. 
here father we thank you for the hope the joy that we have father that that just brings us to worship and to singing your praises father i pray for our service i pray for your message and your messenger lord that you would speak to each of our hearts father that we would open our minds and hearts and receive your word now i pray this father in the name of the lord jesus our blessed hope amen well good morning again it's good to be in god's house amen amen you know we all go through difficulties in life, don't we? Anybody out there having problems? We all have difficulties. We have challenges. And you know what? I know I keep harping about reading the Lord's Word, but I want to tell you something. If we're not in the Lord's Word, we're vulnerable to attack. I want, to hear, I want you to hear me say that. We're vulnerable to attack because we make poor decisions. We don't know what to do. We don't know how to live. And when we encounter, even when you're living good life, you're living for the Lord. You're still going to be uh, having difficulties in life. And I want you to know this, this passage this morning, Psalm 3, you go ahead and turn to that. Psalm 3 has been one of my go-to psalms for many, many, many years. You know why? Because it shows us that the Lord is trustworthy, that we can put our, our lives in His hand, and He's going to look after us. He's going to take care of us. He's going he's to uh, protect us. And today, I, I guess the title of this is, But You, Lord. You know why? Because we have all these difficulties that come towards us, and we keep saying, yeah, but what if I do this? What if I do that? No one's coming to my rescue but You, Lord. But You, Lord. I want to invite you to stand with me. Let's just look at this passage of Scripture together. It's just, eight, it's just a small psalm, just eight verses. Small psalm. Let me just read this to you. You read along with me. Uh, Psalm 3, beginning in verse 1, Scripture says, Lord, how, I, uh, how my foes increase. There are many who attack me. Many say about me, there is no help from him in God. Selah. We'll talk about that in a moment. But you, Lord, your shield around me, my glory and the one who lifts up my head. I cry aloud to the Lord, and he answers me from his holy mountain. I lie down and sleep. I wake again because the Lord sustains me. 
But I will not be afraid of the thousands of people who have taken their stand against me on every side. Rise up, Lord. Save me, my God. You strike all my enemies on their cheek. You break the teeth of the wicked. Salvation belongs to the Lord. May your blessing be upon your people. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for your love. We thank you that you allow us to have this blessed hope in Christ. We uh, have uh, the uh, truth of your word. And Father, we, uh, you allow us to come before your throne of grace in the Lord's name. And you hear our prayers and care about us. And so, Father, I pray that as we go through this uh, psalm this morning, your truth, that you would allow your Holy Spirit to just work through me, work through your people, so that we can understand more and more about how you want to live, us to live in your name. Thank you so much for your grace. In Jesus' name, amen. You can be seated and uh, follow along in the outline provided. Let me ask you a question. Are you trusting in the Lord? Are you living the joy of your salvation? Are you doing that? I mean, it's easy, like we mentioned, to allow circumstances to come in and take our eyes off of Jesus, take our eyes off uh, the Word of God. But you know, He is always at work in our life. He wants to speak to you today. Did you know that? He has a word for you today. And trust in the Lord, it can be difficult. I, I'm the first one to admit that. It, it can be difficult. We have to put our trust in Him. When we put our trust in Him, that means that we, rele- we let go of our life. We no longer have a say-so what happens in our life. And the question is, what if He does something in my life that I don't want Him to do? What if He answered my prayer in a way that I don't want Him to do? Let me just remind you that the Lord's will is perfect. And your will is imperfect. And when the Lord works in your life, even if it's something that you don't like, even if it's something that brings difficulty in your life, that doesn't mean that the Lord's not at work in your life. It means that He's at work in your life and we have opportunity to grow and trust Him all the more. He has our well-being in, uh, in His heart. And these challenges of life, it's easy to fall prey to the doubts, but we have to remember that we can trust in Him. We can trust in Him. But you, Lord... But you, Lord, I want you to remember that. But you, Lord, when you have a difficulty in life, those three words, you you put them in your mind and you bring them to the fore every time. But you, Lord, the Lord is always faithful. This morning, I want to talk about three things that will help us as we trust the Lord and remember, but you, Lord. First of all, let me just uh, say that we must ignore the voices of this world. They're everywhere, aren't they? The voice of this world are knocking uh, us to our knees every time we turn around and listen to them. Look there again in verses 1 and 2. Lord, how many, uh, how my foes increase. There are many who attack me. But many say there is no help for, uh, for him in God. There's no help for him in God. Have you ever been in the depths of despair? Uh, I know many in this room have experienced that. You've been in the depths of despair, and to add insult to injury, the world comes and tells you that there's no hope in following the Lord, that you have no hope in the Lord. It's just a wish. It's just some kind of imaginative thing that you bring up to make yourself feel better. There's no such thing as that, as the Lord in your life. I want you to know the the world's going to tell you that he is unwilling to help you and uh, that he's unable to help you and that he doesn't even exist to help you. Uh, Many years ago, there was a a man by the name of Epicurus. You may have heard of Epicurean philosophy. I don't know if you have or not. That was something that we did in the gobbledygook back in the seminary. But I would just tell you this. For our purposes today, he was just a man who had a philosophy who just came up with different ways of trying to disprove that God was willing or even existed. He would say that if he's able but he's not willing, he's malevolent. If he's, uh, his will is is, uh, to prevent evil, then why is he not able to prevent evil? He's not omnipotent. On and on. The same arguments that the world makes today. It's nothing more than mental gymnastics, folks. There's nothing to it. It's what the world believes. But folks, for those of us who are in Christ, we're called to faithfulness. And let me just say this, even in the midst of difficulties. Sometimes we go through trouble and we think, you know, I'm having a hard time with my stress. I'm having a hard time with my life right now. I should get a pass on being a godly man or a godly woman. Uh -uh. Even in the midst of difficulty, we are still called to Christ-likeness. Amen? We're called to Christ-likeness. Isaiah 50. The Lord says, When I came, there was no one. Why was there no one? When I called, there was no one to answer. Was my arm too short to deliver you? Do I lack the strength to rescue you? 
By a mere rebuke, I can dry up the sea. I can turn rivers to the desert. Where do we turn but to the Lord during our uh, difficulties of life? Why do we sometimes try to fix it on our own? Scripture says, Peter said in 1 Peter 5, cast all your worries upon him because why? He cares for you. Folks, we've got to get it through our head and in our heart that the Lord loves you. He, he truly loves us. He cares for us. He's interested in us. We have a, a relationship with, with him with, between the Lord Jesus. It's a love relationship. John said, we love because he first loved us. We don't initiate that love. He loves us. Jesus is our first love. We have to be willing to, to trust him in that. And there is some trust in that. We have to take a, a risk to, to trust the Lord that he is faithful to us. We have to live our lives in that dependent relationship with him. Jesus told us that, didn't he? He said in John 15, remain in me and I in you. Because without, uh, without me, you can do nothing. If you don't remain in me, you can do nothing. Every relationship that you're going to have in this life is going to require effort. It's going to require sustained uh, faithfulness. Now, that's why we get in trouble sometimes in our relationship. We put our relationships on autopilot. You ever done that? You've had a marriage. You've had your children. You've had friends. You've had uh, co-workers. Any relationship. Maybe they've done that to you. Maybe you've done it to them. You put that relationship on autopilot, and it always leads to challenges and difficulties. When, we be, when we're out of fellowship with Christ, it will affect all the relationships in our life. Proverbs says, trust in the Lord with all your heart and don't rely on your, under, on your own understanding. Why? Because he will make your path straight in all your ways. You must know him. We have to trust the Lord. I know some people have a difficult time trusting people. People have let them down. Maybe people in your life have let you down. Maybe your parents have left you down. Your family have let you down. Maybe uh, other folks in your life have left you down. But Jesus says that you can trust me. In fact, if you look in verse 2 of our passage this morning, he says, many say about me, there's no help for him in God. Selah. You know what that word selah means? It means that, uh, most probably it means to pause, to reflect, just stop and take a breath and consider what's being said. So let's take a breath. Let's remember to trust in God. Let's remember that his promises are true. Let's remember to ignore the world's voices. Let's remember to put our faith in the Lord. Isaiah 41, fear not, for I am with you. Don't be dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you. I will help you. I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. Folks, remember, take a breath. God is completely trustworthy. He cares for you. He even listens to your prayers. He's able. He's willing to take care of you. Isaiah 40, have you not known? Have you not heard? The Lord is everlasting God the creator of the ends of the earth. He doesn't faint or grow weary. His promises are unsearchable. He gives power to the faint. Folks, we have to ignore the world's vo voices if we're going to listen to the Lord. We can't listen to two voices at the same time. Either we're going to pay attention to one voice or another voice. Make your choice. I choose to listen to the Lord. He says we have to ignore the voice of the, Lord, of the, Lord, of the world. Not only that, God proves that he's trustworthy, doesn't he? He proves that he's trustworthy. At there at the end of verse 2, we see Selah. We have to pause. And then it comes right in to verse 3. But you, Lord, are shield around me, my glory and the one who lifts up my head. I cry aloud to the Lord, and he answers me from the mountain. Selah. I lie down and sleep. I wake again because the Lord sustains me. I will not be afraid of the thousands of people who have taken up their stand on me on every side. Folks, the reality is, you may be living in verse 1 and 2. You may be having people come around you right and left who are uh, uh, your foes increasing and trying to attack you, and people telling you that there's no help in the Lord. But folks, there's always a verse 3. He says, but you, Lord, are a shield around me. You're my glory, the one who lifts up my head. Folks, no matter what this world tells you, God is faithful. No matter what he tells you, he rescues, he forgives, he cares for us, he lifts our head. But we've got to depend on him alone. Now, do you notice I said alone? 
We can't depend on Him plus other things. We can't depend on the Lord plus trying to go out there and live a life that we think is uh, worthy of, of honor. We can't uh, live a life of uh, trust in the Lord and try to have some kind of religious ritual. We can't live uh, for the Lord and, and try to add on to it by some other activity. He says that we have to depend on Him. In fact, in verse 4, he says, I cry aloud to the Lord, and He answers me from His holy mountain. That is from heaven. I cry out to Him, and He answers me. Selah. Pause. Reflect. Stop for a moment. Take a breath. It's difficult in our, cult in our culture, isn't it, to take a breath. We're running 90 miles an hour everywhere we go. He says, just stop for a moment. Pause just for a moment and reflect that God hears your prayers. Take a moment and just let him uh, wash over you and respond. Uh, he responds to our prayers in his perfect will. Maybe not to your will. It may not be the way that you want him to respond to you. But if you're obedient to him, you're trusting in him, it's going to be the right thing. In fact, he promises that. In Isaiah 65, before they call, I will hear. While they are yet speaking, I will hear. He's interested in your life. He wants to, to speak to you. There's supernatural power in, his, in a prayer. We've got to pray about everything, folks. We can't just keep it to ourselves. He wants us to bring it to His throne of grace. Don't worry about anything. But in everything through prayer and petition and with thanksgiving, what? Present your requests to, know, uh, to the Lord. We've got to pray to the Lord. He forgives us. He wants us to have that life, but He wants us to know and engage Him in that activity. I love this verse, Colossians 1. We just sing about this. For he has rescued us from the kingdom of darkness and transferred us into the kingdom of his dear son. God is trustworthy. He's rescued us. He has redeemed us. We're forgiven. He wants us to live life in Christ that we're obedient to him. He wants to have our identity in Christ. He wants us to have our meaning in Christ. He wants us to have a life that is full of confidence. But folks, the only way we're going to do that is when we put our trust in the Lord. When we believe that the Lord is in verse 3 of our life. That the, the difficulties of our life that come to us can only be addressed through the power of God. Verse 5 says, I lie down and sleep. I wake up again because the Lord sustains me. I won't be afraid of the thousands of people who've taken up their uh, stand against me on every side. Now, have you ever lost sleep because you had a problem or a trouble in your life, a concern? I know you have. We all have. God gives us the confidence to sleep in the midst of trouble. We've got to learn to trust in Him. We have to trust in His provision and His protection. We have to Trust in the, the unmerited salvation in it that He has given us through Christ alone. It makes you want to praise Him, doesn't it? When you, when you think about all that, it just makes you want to praise Him. It reminds me, the psalmist, just a few chapters over, says, Sing to Him a new song. Play skillfully with a, a shout of joy. Express your thanksgiving to Him. Folks, we got to ignore the voices of this world. We can't pay attention to them because they're going to tell you that the Lord doesn't love you. He's not going to take care of you. He's not faithful to you. But God has proven that he is trustworthy. He has come to our rescue. In fact, in verse 8, he says, he, uh, Salvation belongs to the Lord, and your blessings will be on your people. We've got to pause and remember that the salvation that we have comes from the Lord himself, from Christ alone. He has given us this wonderful salvation. He has blessed us and he's forgiven us. He gives us that natural longing for him. Folks, it requires us to be faithful for us to, to meet that re requirements of being with the Lord. It requires us to walk in His ways. You know what? It strikes me that the Lord has never, ever uh, just kind of glossed over what He expects out of us in that relationship. You say, well, how do I know how to trust Him? He tells us exactly how to trust Him. And I think in our world today that we have elevated ourselves to such a status in our own minds that we think that we're almost in an equal relationship with God. Folks, we're in a vertical relationship with Him. Never forget that. We're in a vertical relationship with Him. Jesus said in Luke 14, whoever does not bear his own cross can't come after me. We have to come in and servitude to Him. We've got to pick up our cross. We're going to bear it. We've got to move forward. And faithfulness, by the way, is a byproduct of obedience. We have to give our lives to Him. And make that, uh, that effort to, to trust Him every day. 
folks, I'll be the first to say it's not easy. We've got to trust them in our behavior and our, our, our life situations, our relationships, our attitudes. We've got to place our, our trust in the Lord, our hope in Him. Then we've got to get busy doing that. Getting in the Word of God. Being in prayer. Finding our identity in Christ. This world wants to snatch your identity, folks. And you keep, I keep saying that, but what I'm saying is it wants to make you into its image. Christ alone. Christ alone. He wants to be your identity. Be faithful. Do the things that He wants you to do. He has told us how faithful He is. At the beginning of the Old Testament, Genesis 8, uh, 28, I am with you, I will watch over you wherever you go. I will bring you back to this land. I will not leave you until I have done what I have promised you. And then when Jesus ascended, He said the same thing. Remember, I'm with you always, even to the end of the age. Jesus has promised us He'll be with us. He protects His own. He takes care of us. But folks, we've got to ignore this world. We can't, we can't pay attention to the voices of this world. We can't uh, allow that to happen because the Lord has proven Himself faithful. And finally, I want to just say that God protects His own. You know, He, he is faithful to us, and He requires us to be faithful. And this passage gives us an illustration of just how a father protects his own when we call out to him for help. Look there with me in verse 7. Rise up, Lord, save me, my God, and you strike all my enemies on the cheek. You break the teeth of the wicked. Folks, he is our father. He's our father. We're his children. And this image here is a one-two punch. It's the image of a father punching the enemy in the face, the cheek. It's the image of, of them following up with a punch to the mouth, breaking their teeth. He's always intervening for us. He will protect us. Your Father loves you very much. we got to trust Him. We can't go through life almost trusting Him. We can't be kind of in and kind of out. We're in all along, alone on Christ. This world's going to tell you that He's not there. He's not faithful to you. He doesn't love you. He don't care about you. The Lord is trustworthy. He protects His own. He loves us. He sent his Lord, the Lord Jesus to come and die for us because He loves us so much. Paul said in Ephesians 3, To know the love of Christ, what passes all knowledge, that you may be filled with the fullness of God. That's the relationship that He wants us to have with Him, that we would be filled with the fullness of God, that we would pass all knowledge because it's so wonderful we can't contain it. That life, I want to tell you, it is. It's difficult. It's emotionally straining, spiritually, physically straining. This world, is it just takes every bit of you out. It, there's a toll to be paid to walk down this, uh, this life's way. But folks, we have been redeemed. Those of us in Christ have been redeemed, amen? We've been redeemed to holiness. We've been redeemed to holiness. Colossians 1.5, God decided in advance to adopt us into his own family by bringing us to himself through Jesus Christ. This is what he wanted to do, and it gave him great pleasure. He has lavished his love on us and made us his children, made us the children of God. Do you have difficulties in your life? Are you struggling with a trouble? And you're trying to fix it, but you have no control over it. Can anybody in here make the wind blow? Is there a person in here to control the wind? I can't. I don't think you can, but you know what? We all try to make the wind blow a certain direction, don't we? We can't control it. Have no control over this world. It's an absolute illusion to think that you can control anything in your life. But you know what? Verse 3 is true. But you, Lord, are a shield around me. You're a shield around me. You're my glory and the one who lifts up my head. Have you ever been so tired that you need someone to carry you? Of course you have. We all have had that somewhere along the way. He wants to take care of you. He wants to protect you. But you've got to trust Him alone. Trust Him alone. Do you trust Him today? Let me ask you a question. Is anybody in here, anybody in this room, ever experienced the grace of God? Raise your hand if, you, if He's proven faithful to your life. Stand up. Let's pray. Father, we thank You that You love us. We thank You that You give us the grace that we need to walk in Your way. And Father, I pray that as we 
uh, continue walking in life's way that you would continue to f be faithful to us. And Father, that we would be faithful to you by trusting you, by giving our lives to you, trusting in Jesus alone. And Father, we know that we can't do it, but somehow in our minds, uh, we, we know it, but in our hearts, we don't. We, we keep on trying to control the various things of life. I pray that today we can lay it down once and for all. And Father, I pray that your people will be found faithful today as we come to this time of invitation. In Jesus' name we pray, and amen. Folks, I don't know what's going on in your life. I don't know what's going on in your life or your ministry. But you know what the Lord does? And this altar is for you. It's time to come and lay it down. It's time to put it at the foot of the cross and leave it there. And let the Lord work in your life. Would you come as we sing? house. Thank you for your faithfulness today. I want to just make a, a special uh, emphasis on our announcements today. We are uh, going through denomination, and if you are so inclined, you feel the Lord's uh, leadership here, please uh, make yourself, uh, allow the Lord to, to use you in that. The nominations are uh, in the bulletin, the qualifications are in the bulletin, and please uh, uh, go ahead and be faithful to that. Uh, we'll be receiving those next week, and it's important that we continue uh, to do that. Our deacons are wonderful, and uh, I just love uh, each and every one of them. They mean so much to me personally and, and together, and so we want to uh, uh, allow the Lord to continue uh, to use that group of men and, and whoever else he would have to serve in that group 
of men as well. Um, I think Nick has something. After he comes, uh, Brother Thurman's going to pray, and it's good to be in God's house. Good to go out in the, in the world and trust him. Why? Because the Lord is faithful. Amen. 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 Hey, I wanted to uh, give a few quick announcements. So I'm sure everybody noticed that we've got the new uh, church sign down there with our church's logo on it. We actually have a bunch of yard signs to go with that as well with our service time with the logo so that everything matches up. So I'll get that box out after the service. If you want to take one home with you and put it in your driveway, feel free to. If you would like me to come install it for you, I'll be happy to come install it at the end of your driveway. So just let me know about that. But I also wanted to remind everybody as um, the school year's rapidly approaching, we've got some supplies here already that we're planning on taking down to East Knox, but I wanted to try to collect a few more. So I thought it would be best if we focused on just doing a couple things. That way we can get you know, a lot of a few things rather than a little of a, a lot of different things. So I was thinking um, pencils, notebook paper, and crowns. We know those are things that pretty much every grade level in elementary school can use. Um, so pencils, notebook paper, crowns. And, and the same goes with that. If, you know, you want me to do your shopping for you, I'm planning on going to Sam. So just see me and I can, I can pick up a few extra packs for you when I go. But that's all I have. Brother Thurman. Just don't forget what the pastor said about his praying for America. Seems like we're in a mess, doesn't it? But God's still there. I believe it with all my heart. <clears throat> Just like the psalmist this morning, it's David's psalm. It's a wonderful psalm. And it's just a beautiful thing to know that God's with you always, even, even when the darkest air is there. He's there. And when you're having a good time, he's there too. And sometimes we wander off like sheep and he goes back and he picks us up and he brings us back to the fold. So let's remember that God's always there and we need to pray to him daily. We need to pray for America. It's in a mess. Nothing God can't handle. And let's just continue on. Let's pray, please. Father, we thank you. We thank you so very much for what you've done for us. What you did at the cross, Lord, sealed the whole thing. We don't have to worry anymore. You know, we do accept you as our personal Savior, Father. And you'll take us through all kinds of trials and situations that we could never deal with. But, Lord, we ask you, Father, that uh, you help us because we're weak. We're frail. We can't do what we think we can do sometimes. And sometimes we try to do too much and we fail at it. And then we don't want to do it again. But help us to get up and start again, Lord, and, and seek you out while you might be found. Lord, there's so many people that need to get saved. We need to be out there. We need to be out there talking to them and tell them about Jesus. Opportunities are there, believe me. It's there, it sounds. I had that opportunity, Father, you give me the, just this week. It is a wonderful opportunity, Lord. It's, it's everywhere. Wherever you go, God's there. No matter where it's at. Or how far you go, he's still there when you get there. Lord, I just ask you now to be with these church members, be with all of us. Father, as we go out, go with us, lead us, direct us, and keep us safe until we return back here again. And Father, we pray for those that might be lost. We pray for those that need to make a decision. We pray for those that's sick. We pray for those that's going to have surgery. The ones we know about, the ones we don't know about, you have not forgotten them. Lord, we just thank you for the blessing you poured upon us because it's many and it's much. And we can never thank you enough for what you've done for us at the cross. In Jesus' name, amen.